Hare Krishna. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimati Bhaktivika Shaswami Niti Namine. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimati Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Pashtata Deshatari. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhaktivinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Okay, I welcome you all for this Brahma Samhita discussions. Today we are at Shloka 58, which is first of Pancha Shloki's instructions of Lord Mahavishnu Krishna to Brahma. So we'll be reading from Brahma Samhita. This is text 58. Prabuddhe jnana bhakti bhyam atman jnananda chinmai udetyan uttama bhaktir bhagavat prema lakshanam. Here, the, just to remind ourselves what happened previous loka is after hearing Lord Brahma's prayers, uh, Lord Mahavishnu spoke to him. On hearing these hymns containing the essence of the truth, the Supreme Lord Krishna said to Brahma, Brahma, if you experience this inclination to create offsprings by being endowed with the real knowledge of the glory of Godhead, listen, my beloved, from me to this science set forth in the following five shlokas. So now the Lord announced that I will instruct you. How can you create? Do your service, do your duty as an engineer of the material uh, universe and all the planetary system and all the bodies and all the subtle and gross things, but not be entangled. You, you create, but not be entangled by Maya. That was the, um, how, to, how can you do it as an act of devotional service? This is really what is said here. How bhakti is practiced by performing worldly duties in the form of carrying out the commands of the Supreme Lord is being described. So now the first shloka <clears throat> today we are reading the first of uh, Panchash Loki, says like this. Lord says, when the pure spiritual experience is excited by means of cognition, knowledge, and service, bhakti, super excellent unalloyed devotion characterized by love for Godhead is awakened towards Krishna, the beloved of all souls. So this is the first instruction to Brahma, that Prabhude, when excited, jnana bhakti vyam, by knowledge and bhakti, atman ananda chinmai, then bhakti vyam, by the worship atmani, pure spirit soul, ananda chinmai, full of knowledge and bliss, udeti, is awakened. What is awakened? Anuttama bhakti, pure devotion. Bhagavat for Krishna, prema. Bhagavat prema lakshana, characterized by love of God. So this is the first instruction. So here the, the Srila Jiva Goswami comments here that as an act of mercy, Mahavishnu spoke to Brahma these five instructions because he was pleased with him and he understood his mind. He was afraid, oh, I'll get caught up with Maya in this material world. And uh, then he spoke these five instructions. And this is the combination of knowledge and devotion. Many times you have this uh, dispute, and we'll be discussing about it. Uh, impersonalists, many times they comment and criticize devotees that, oh, you practice bhakti. Good, good. You chant Hare Krishna. You are sentimentalists. You are just chanting Hare Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has been criticized by this Prakashananda Saraswati, Mayavadi, leader of Mayavadis in Varanasi, and all his followers. They are simply chanting, chanting dancing sentimentally. Uh, Good. Anyway, chanting Krishna's name. Good. Next life, you'll come to the platform of Jnana. <laughs> yeah. Even some of the uh, South Indian scholars also feel like that. They also feel like that. But from different angles. Uh, so we he heard that. That a bhakti is for sentimentalists, those who cannot study Vedanta, who cannot study Vedic literatures, who are not able to Control mind and senses. Good. You do bhajan. Good. Chant. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Very good. You get benefit. 
<laughs> um, but here, the combination of knowledge and bhakti. Prabhupada say that it's not that because devotees are emotional that they have no knowledge about God. And knowledge is there. But devotees always go for that type of knowledge which invokes bhakti, bhakti tattva, bhakti jnana. We study Bhagavatam, we study literature, we are memorizing so many shlokas. Every day we are reading from the Vedic scriptures. So, but what for? Not to become pundits, not to become self-realized soul in the sense of impersonalist or atma, atma-realized soul, ahambramasmi, in that sense. But as a servants of Krishna, we want to read Shastras to get bhakti, bhakti grantas we study. Not that impersonal understanding that ultimately will merge into Lord or something like that. So devotees, they know the things. Not that they know, but actually they're the only one who knows. They're only one understood absolute knowledge, absolute truth. Vadant is to tattva vidas, tattvam, yaj jnanam, advayam, brahmeti, paramatmeti, bhagavan, iti shabjate. Actually only devotees understand that Lord has three aspects, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan, and they understand that Bhagavan is ultimate one because Paramatma and Brahman comes from him. One is the versions of his body, one is his localized aspect, as all-pervading Paramatma. So, devotees are falsely accused of not being knowledgeable. But you can see Acharyas, like Madhva Acharya, Ramanuja Acharya, they blasted all Mayavadis and impersonalists. <laughs> Later on, Prabhupada came, did the same thing. Who could stand in front of Prabhupada? Who could argue with him? Huh? Because this is what Krishna says, Bhaktya Maam Abhijanati. I am known by Bhakti. Yavan Yashchaspi Tattvataha. In truth, if you know. Tatomam Tattvato Gyatva Vishate Tadanantara. Vishate Tadanantara means the enter there. <laughs> Vishate Tadanantaram. And Mayavadis say, oh, Vishate Tadanantaram. You'll become one with him. No, you will, the gate of Vaikuntha will be open, and then you will see varieties there and engage devotion service with all other devotees who are already serving there. Yeah? So that is the difference. So, Bhaktyamam Abhijanati. Janati means to know, I'll be known by Bhakti, not Jnana Mam Abhijanati, Karma Mam Abhijanati, Dhana Mam Abhijanati, Tapas. No, by Bhakti, Bhaktyamam Abhijanati. So here the Lord, first definition itself, by Jnana and Bhakti, you will develop love of God. That's the idea. That's the message. Okay. So here, we will uh, immediately, Shri Goswami quotes, uh, the combination of knowledge and bhakti is explained to Uddhav by Krishna in Bhagavatam. So he quotes immediately, tasmat jnanena sahitam jyatva swatmanam uddhava jnana vijnana sapano sapano bhaja bhaja maam bhakti bhavataha. So what is this? Therefore, my dear Uda, through knowledge, you should understand your actual self. Tasmaj jnanena sahitam jyatva swatmanam. By you understand who are you. We are not the body. We are not the mind. We are not the intellect. We are the spirit soul. And what is spirit soul? Krishna Rasarupa. What is that? Jiva Rasarupa. Krishna Ranityadas. That's the, that's the understanding. That by jnana you understand this, by hearing from Gita, by hearing from Bhagavatam, by hearing from pure devotees, by hearing from Vedic literatures, you understand that you are not this body, you are spirit soul, and therefore your swarupa is to engage eternally in the service of the Lord. Gyatva, Swatmana, Mudava, Jnana, Vijnana, Sampano. So then advancing by clear realization. Now by hearing that we are servants of Krishna, what do we do? Then we engage in his service. No, remember when you first time came in contact with devotees, with Prabhupada's books, with Prabhupada's teaching, it comes that what scientists call aha moment. Ah, oh, yes, oh, I was wasting my life. I was serving the senses. I was serving mine. I was serving parents. I was serving professors. I was serving my boss. I was serving my nation. I was serving my dog. But I'm Krishna's servant. Therefore, I was never happy. No, that aha moment. Ah, oh, yes. And then, at the urge comes, I shall not waste another single second of my life because now I have this knowledge. So by this knowledge and then chanting, hearing in association with the waters, that the realization comes. No? So here, jnana, vijnana. Now jnana is not enough. 
yeah, yeah, we are not this body, we are not this body. And then again, engaging all kinds of sense gratification. That will not uh, bring us to the goal, to Krishna Prema. So jnana, vijnana sampan, that jnana must lead to vijnana. How? By getting purified, by, by being engaged in devotional service, we get purified. And then, what is that? Bhaja maam bhakti bhavataha. Then advancing by clear realization with knowledge, you should worship me in the mood of loving devotion. So again, the combination of knowledge and the devotional service leads to the bhakti. So this is, Srila Jaya Goswami just calls this and leaves it at that. Of course, we have a purport here by Bhakti Thakur, translated by Bhakti Saraswati Thakur, so we'll go to the purport. Purport says like this, real knowledge is nothing but knowledge of one's relationship to the Absolute. Okay, now look at this definition of knowledge. Sir, what is your qualification? Hmm? Professor Jay, what is your qualification? What's your qualification? Yeah, of course. Help me make the point, you know. Uh -huh. What? MB. MDS. MDS. Okay, and you? Engineer. And you? Engineer. Oh, I see. And you? Huh? MPhil. MPhil. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. Question is like this. Real knowledge is nothing but knowledge of one's relationship to the absolute. Have you learned that in your college? Huh? Anybody? Huh? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. Means, hey, after all this education, you remain ignorant till you come in touch with Prabhupada's books. And this is really the truth. <coughs> because you may be PhD and you'll be full number one. You know, PhD, permanent head damage. <laughs> That, because you're more puffed up, you are more conditioned than ordinary soul. You think I'm very big, I'm this, I'm that, but you do not know the fundamental truth. I'm servant of the Lord. Now you know. You see how they were hesitating to tell this material qualification because these are not qualification at all. These are not at all qualification for anything in spiritual life. You know, mostly they are disqualification because you say I know. I'm MBS, I'm, M I'm this, I'm Phil, you know, I'm Phil, how do you feel? The, the, no, when, after reading Prabhupada's books, we are disarmed. All these false decoration of our ego are completely disarmed. We stand as a fools in front of spiritual master. And that's good. Then you can learn. Then we can learn. We can actually get it. So look at this. Real knowledge is nothing but knowledge of one's relationship to the absolute. What is it? What did Prabhupada speak, uh, uh, Prabhupada is speaking about? Sambandha jnana. Sambandha jnana. The knowledge of relationship. Real knowledge is identical with the knowledge of subjective natures of chit, animate, achit, inanimate, and Krishna, and of their mutual relationship. So we have three things that exist, that everything is made of. There is a spirit, matter, and Krishna, the supreme spirit of controller of all of this. Nothing that you can conceive, that you can perceive, that you can talk about, imagine, or speculate about, or, or experience, is out of these three categories. Think of anything. Anything. Pillar. What is it? Achit. Inanimate. Think of him. Person walking around. Jiva. No? And then? Supreme controller or Krishna, anything, any any concept, these are three categories. So now to understand what is spirit, what is matter, who is controller of all of that, and what is his nature? What is the relationship between these three? This is called Sambandha Jnana. This is defined here. Now, the Jnana Bhakti Bhyam, this Jnana leads to Bhagavad Prema Lakshana. So this Jnana cannot refer to impersonal knowledge. Because the impersonal knowledge is completely contradictory to the bhakti. Why? Because by impersonal knowledge, you think I'll become God or I'll merge into God. So this jnana here, oh, jnana is listed first before bhakti. <laughs> so that jnana is related to bhakti. This jnana is bhakti tattva, bhakti jnana. 
This is Ghana, which will invoke Bhakti. So here immediately Bhakti and Saraswati Thakur translate. Here, mental speculation is not alluded to, since that is antagonistic to service Bhakti. So this is very clear, that here we are not referring to this impersonal knowledge. We are referring to this knowledge of true nature. What is the position of soul in relation to God? What is the position of material world in relation to God? What is position of material world in relation to Jiva? What is position of Jiva related to another Jiva? And what is position of Jiva and material world related to God? Anyway, Madhvacharya gives this Pancha Bedas. He explains that there are five differences which are eternal. That God is eternally different from the soul. Soul is different from another soul eternally, even after moksha, you remain individual. Soul is different from matter. Matter is different from God, and matter is different from matter in the forms, in the shapes. So these five differences he lists to understand. Now their relation with God. What is soul's relation with God? Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Brahmasmi. Okay, I'm the Brahman, I'm spirit soul. But what is my relation with Krishna? So this complete knowledge is that I'm spirit soul, Mama Evam Shojiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. I'm eternal servant of Krishna. That that understanding, that clicks, that makes you engage in spiritual life. We simply know I'm spirit, I'm not matter. But what do I do? If you think I'm only spirit, I'm the Brahman, I'm not matter, then you seize all activities. Then only solution stop all material activities because I'm not material person, I'm spiritual person. So this is what Shankara propagates. You take sannyas. If you don't take sannyas, you're not serious. You're still engaged in activities, which are material by material value. So seize all activities. Buddhism says stop all the even desires. Shunyavad, zero. Huh? But we understand I'm spirit soul. I'm servant of God. There is part one, I'm spirit soul. Part two, I'm servant of God. It's not part two, it's a part one, but they don't know the second portion. They never finish the sentence. They write only first, I'm spirit soul. Oh, they close the book. I open the book right to the end. <laughs> That's what is missing. And if you don't understand servant of Krishna, you can't engage in devotion service. You miss all the point altogether. So here, the, the, that concept, that misunderstanding of Sambandha Jnana, unless Sambandha Jnana is clear, there is no advancement in spiritual life. People come to temple and they pray to God, but they're not clear what God is, who God is. They cannot achieve the goal. Yeah. One fellow came one day and, uh, you know, we welcome him and said, nice, you came. Yeah, I came for darshan. I said, very nice. Yes, today is Sai Baba's birthday, so I came for darshan. I said, okay, but you missed the temple. It means nice you came to Krishna's temple, you get some benefit at least, you know. Oh, I don't see the difference between Sai Baba and Krishna. Okay, sit down. <laughs> I'll explain the difference. <laughs> so this is the problem. He comes to temple, but how will he advance to the level of bhakti when he doesn't know whom you should love? How, how is it possible? How is it possible to develop prema bhakti, which is goal? of human life unless you know Sambandha Jnana clearly. If you think that Krishna is just another devata, so many problems are there, we'll discuss. Okay, here, the, the, we'll go to Chaitanya and Charitamrita, of course, for definitions. Here, Bhagavan, Sambandha, Bhakti, Abhideya, Hai, Prema, Prayojana, Vedetina, Vastu, Kai. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains in, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The Supreme Personality Godhead is the central, central point of all relationship. Central point of all relationship. Well, immediately, straight to the point. Krishna is central point of all relationship. Everything is related to Krishna. Everyone is related to Krishna. Acting in devotional service to him is one's real occupation. What is it? Abhideya, right. And the attainment of love of God is ultimate goal of life, prayojana. Vedatina Vastukai. These three subject matter are described in Vedic literatures. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says all Vedic literature, every single mantra, shloka, can be divided, classified, either it's Sambandha Jnana or Abhideya or Prayojana. 
either speaking about relation with God or is speaking about acting in relationship to God, activities. Since I know I'm the spirit soul, I'm servant of God, now how to serve God? And prayojana, what is the result? What is the goal of service to the Lord? So any literature, including our books, Prabhupada's books, you open any shloka of Gita, any purport, any sentence, and you think about it, what is describing? Is it Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana? You can classify it. Nothing else is described in Vedas than these three things. Either is Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana. Okay, here, Veda Shastra Kahe, Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana, Krishna Prapya, Sambandha, Bhakti Praptyara, Sadhan. The Vedic literature gives information about the living entity's eternal relationship with Krishna, which is called Sambandha. Okay, definition of Sambandha is given here. The living entity's understanding of this relationship and his acting accordingly is called Abhideya. Once you understand the servant of Krishna, you start serving Krishna. And returning home back to Godhead is the ultimate goal of life and it's called Prayojan. Again, Chaitanya Charitamrita gives definition. Now again, Sambandha Abhideya Prayojana Nam Etina Arta Sarva Sutra Prayavasan. Pariyavasan. One's relationship with Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sambandha, activities in terms of relationship, Abhideya, and ultimate God of life to develop love of God. These three subjects are explained in every aphorism of Vedanta Sutra, for they form the culmination of entire Vedanta philosophy. Okay, now, not only in all the Vedas, but now particularly this guy, Vedanta Sutra. Srila Prabhupada explains this in the purport. The Vedanta Sutra consists of four chapters. Four padas are there in Vedanta Sutra. And then every pad has another four divisions. The first two chapters discuss the relationship of living entity with Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sambandha Jnana. This is known as Sambandha Jnana, or knowledge of the relationship. The third chapter describes how one can act in his relationship with Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is called Abhidheya Jnana. The supreme relationship of living entity with the Supreme Lord is described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is that? Jivara Sarupa Krishna Nityadas. The living entity is eternal servant of Krishna. That is Sambhant. Therefore, to act in that relationship, one must perform sadhana bhakti, or the prescribed duties of service to the Supreme Personality Godhead. This is called Abhideya Gyan. The fourth chapter describes the result of such devotional service, Prayojana Gyan. So four chapter of Vedanta Sutra describes Prayojana. This ultimate goal of life is to go back home, back to Godhead. The words Anavriti Shabdat in the Vedanta Sutra indicates this ultimate goal. So Prabhupada just give an example. You see, this is Prayojana described in Vedanta Sutra, just like this. You know? So these things are described in the, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And uh, we have a further explanation by Srila Prabhupada about these three divisions. This is uh, essential. This is all Prabhupada's books are actually discussing this Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana. And Sambandha describes in more details than even Abhideya and Prayojana. Prayojana you find here and there, a little bit about love of God, a little bit about prayer bhakti, you know, a little bit about symptoms of pure bhakti. But first, but millions places you find, you're not his body, you're not his boy, you're not American, you're not Indian, you're not black, you're not tall, you're not male, you're not female, you're not your mind, you're not your intelligence, you're not your ego, you know. These are grinded, hammered again and again and again and again. Because without understanding this, there's no question of acting properly in devotional service. You know? And uh, books are also classified generally, generally like this. Gita is known as Sambandha book. Though Gita describes also Abhideya, Manmana, Bahamad Bhakto, Abhideya, and Prayojana. Prayojana is there, Abhideya is there, but mainly Gita is Sambandha book explaining what is the soul, what is the mind, what are the senses, what is the relation to God, how to focus, how to control, how to engage, how to act. No? And then you have Bhagavatam, Abhideya book, how to act, how different devotees serve Krishna, Dhruva, Prahlad, Bali Maharaj, you have Uddhava, you have Gopis, you have so many uh, things are described, devotees serving the Lord, Abhideya. And then you have Chaitanya and Charitamrita, the Prayojana book. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, this is when you have love of God, this is how it looks like. No, it's just 
dance and sings madly and shows all the symptoms and, and embraces everyone and finish him up. There's no, you know, there is no welcome to Sunday feast and then slowly start one round, two round chanting and shave your mustaches, nothing. Just one hug by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, gone. Love of God had immediately manifested, you know. That's, that's exceptional, you no? Know? But the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed what is love of God? What means to have love of God? What means to be fully Krishna conscious? What, what means to have actually full attachment to Krishna? This is showed. This is uh, manifested as a complete detachment from anything material and fully absorption in Krishna and Krishna service. That 24 hours one cannot forget Krishna. That is that is explained in the in the by the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifesting in Chaitanya Charitamrita explains. So these are, these are classified <clears throat> generally like that. Srila Prabhupada explains like this in the purport. In Bhagavatam 555 it says, Parabhava stavat abhodajato yavana jigyasatatma tattvam. Now, human being is defeated in all his activities as long as he does not know the goal of life which can be understood when one is inquisitive about Brahman. Therefore, Vedanta Sutra starts, Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Atato means now. Now means what now? Now, after going through 84 legs of species, now you get human form of life. Now you ask about God. Because in all other species you couldn't. And already you've seen all the 84 legs of species and there is no happiness there. There is no enjoyment. The sense gratification does not work. Stop now repeated birth and death. Atato, now you ask, Brahma Jigas. Now in human form, you ask, what is Brahman? What is the goal? What is the life? What is that? Who am I? What is my relation? Why I have to die? Why I have to suffer? Why I'm not happy? This is all Atato Brahma Jigas. And then Brahman, that, that Brahman is described in some Banda Gyanas, in some Banda books, in, in the explanations. It is such inquiry that begins the Vedanta Sutra, Atato Brahma Jigyas. Human beings should be inquisitive to know who he is, what the universe is, what God is, and what the relationship, uh, relationship is between himself, God, and the material world. So again, you have this. Sat, Asat, and Chit, or Chit, Achit, and Krishna. Such questions cannot be asked by cats and dogs, but they must arise in the heart of real human being. Knowledge of these four items. Okay, knowledge of four items. It's called Sambandha Jnana. Knowledge of one's relationship. Okay, namely, oneself, the universe, God, and their relationship. So this should be understood. What is the jiva? What is the matter? Who is Bhagavan? And what is their relationship? These four things should be clear. That's called Sambhadha Jnana, or the knowledge of one's relationship. When one's relationship with the Supreme Lord is established, that I'm servant of Krishna, and therefore material energy is also Krishna's energy, means that I have to be engaged in Krishna's service, and everything also should be engaged in Krishna's service. Matter also should be used in Krishna's service. Not like Maya would say, this material cannot be used in Krishna's service. No, it's offerable is offerable. It's Krishna's energy should be used in Krishna's service. Flower. Oh, it's material. Why material? I take a flower offer to Krishna. He's spiritual. Purposes of his existence to please Krishna. Krishna's energy using Krishna's service. Perfection. So Prabhupada gives a simple example. It's so much amazing. Prabhupada says, you pluck the flower from the tree and smell it and that flower, um, you get karmic reaction for it because you are taking Krishna's energy for your sense gratification. Same tree, same flower, you take off it to Krishna and then you smell it. And same flower uplifts you to the spiritual platform, to spiritual consciousness. So, so what is the matter? Matter is something which is not engaged in Krishna's service, basically. We, have, we can Krishnaize the matter. This is computer, it's Krishnaized. Mike is Krishnaized because it's used in Krishna's service. It's not used for flimsy songs, is not used for sense gratification, is not used to glorify anybody else than Krishna, is spiritual. It may show externally material symptoms, but it's pure, because it's, it's a completely spiritualized. Therefore, Guru's shoes, Guru's pen, Guru's clothes, it's all Guru's table, Guru's, Guru's room, 
Guru's asanas, these are all spiritual things because they are used exclusively in Krishna's service. <laughs> this is Krishna's, it's Krishna's. It's not ordinary. This, these pillars, the vehicles we use, everything is spiritual. Nothing is material. The temple, stone building, it's all spiritual. Nothing is manifestation of matter because it's used in Krishna's service. That's the understanding. So once you understand that we are eternal servants of Krishna, the next program, Prabhupada said, the next program is to act in that relationship. This is called Abhideya, or activity in relationship with the Lord. After executing such prescribed duties, when one attains the highest goal of life, love of Godhead, he achieves Prayojana Siddhi, or the fulfillment of his human mission. In the very Brahma Sutra or Vedanta Sutra, these subjects are very carefully explained. Therefore, one who does not understand Vedanta Sutra in the terms of these principles is simply wasting his time. This is version of Srimad Bhagavatam. Dharva, Svanushita, Pumsa, Vishwaksena, Kata, Surya. Not Pada yet, Yadiratim, Shrama, Eva, Hikevala. Shrama, Eva, Hikevala, simply useless waste of time. You study Vedanta and you do not serve Krishna. <laughs> you're, you're Pujari or you're a Sanskrit Pandit. Or, or you are you are born in Brahmin family and you are not devotee of Krishna. And what is the use? What is the use of your study? If you that means you did not understand basic sambandha jnana. So jnana and bhakti. The jnana must be there. Proper understanding must be there. If proper understanding is not there, one will not be able to advance. This is the big issue. Even if they chant Hare Krishna, it will take ten million years to advance. Okay. So, one may be a very learned scholar and execute his prescribed duties very nicely, but if he does not ultimately become inquisitive over the Supreme Personality of Godhead and, and is indifferent to Shavanam Kirtanam, indifferent to Shavanam, means he has no interest, no taste for hearing. How do you know somebody is advanced in bhakti? Because he's temple president and has big belly. Because he holds post, he's own secretary. Because he has Brahmin thread so thick that you can see it for three months. You can tie, tie up the ship with it, you know. You know, cow you can tie, it's such a thick Brahmin thread. How you know one is advanced? Because he puts nice tea like as big oily shika smell with coconut oil. How do we know? Because one poses, one has this plaster chadar always on the shoulder. And he always mingles with Guru Maharaj. How do you know one is advanced? Yeah, but just say about one who serves, he is advanced. One who is engaged in service, one who has taste for hearing, taste for service, taste for chanting. No, these are the symptoms. One who is attracted to Krishna, one who is, even if he's not attracted, at least he is 100% endeavoring to be engaged in Krishna's service, to not be spaced out, to be Krishna conscious. At least this much we can appreciate at this stage of our bhakti. No? One should not be indifferent, Shavanam Kirtan. No? Oh, he's very advanced devotee. Big manager. Every time Bhagavad in class, he goes around with, with phone. And anytime, even when Guru speaks, he's just managing around. He doesn't hear. They, they, you must understand, it's not by position. This is a big problem in India. In India, traditionally, everything is done by hierarchy. Taratamya is very prominent in India, that junior, senior, junior, senior, that is there. That is there, that must be there, but should be based on spiritual values, not on the material values. Simply because I joined 20 years before you, I'm senior. It's not by age, no, that's not by age. I joined 20 years earlier, means 20 years earlier I had a chance to engage in Shavana Kirtan, and still I did, I'm not doing it. So we are not looking at this. We are not looking at the age. We are not looking. And you? You have second initiation? No. Ah, okay, you're junior. <laughs> second initiation, first initiation means how much service today you did for Krishna. How much you remember Krishna. How much we are Krishna conscious. That is counted. It's not by title. It's not by position. It's not by showing off. It's by the quality of attachment to Krishna. This indifferent to Shavana Kirtan. Big, big pandit is indifferent to Shavana Kirtan. No? Hearing and chanting. All that he has done is but a waste of time, Prabhupada concludes. 
my other philosophers who do not understand the relationship between themselves, the cosmic manifestation and supreme personality of Godhead are simply wasting their time and their philosophical speculations has no value. See, this is problem with us. We are very stiff group. We are apparently fanatical group. We don't mingle even with other Hindus. We don't mingle with other Swamiji's. We don't go to other temples because Sambandha Jnana is clear and their one is not clear. But they also sadhu, they also wear saffron, they also worship God. What's your problem? You know? They are sadhus, no? They are sadhus in the sense that they control their mind and senses. But their desire is to become God and our desire is to serve God. No mingling. This is the problem. No, we don't mingle, we can't hear from them. They don't know Sambandha Jnana, they are in illusion, the knowledge is wrong. And particularly if they are Mayavadis, if they are commenting on Krishna's form, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's qualities, that these are material, oh, this is very offensive, we cannot hear. Everything will be destroyed. If you hear from Mayavadis, Mayavada Bhashashun, go on, how bhakti, go on, go on. What are little, 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 little creepers? I just know from the seed is some little green, one, 0.1 mm is coming up, and then the elephant comes and step upon, boom, gone, finished. Burn into ashes by fire of Maya, by contamination of that. So this, all these things. Okay. So Prabhupada, so this, this is, this must be understood. Don't be too sentimental. Oh, they also meditate. They also chant. They also chant Krishna's name. But the next day they chant Durga's name also, and they chant Shiva's name also, and think you all are the same. No. You understand? This is the problem. Sometimes the other is so sentimental. Oh, they also we call all other groups who are also doing kirtana. No one does that. They have some kirtan. The idea of kirtan came to the West, and West is West is always, you know, West. <laughs> West West means place where you enjoy the senses. So everything is even kirtan is twisted into sense gratification. Huh? It's like this: kirtan for enjoyment. So you can see big Kirtanya is singing Hare Krishna Mahamantra very nicely. Very nicely, beautiful voice, baritone, deep, beautiful, colorful voice. And he can do the, oh, you know, this Alankara, you know, very nicely. I will never in my life sing like this. I sing like a crow, you know, and he's a beautiful singer. Okay, so devotees play his bhajan. I'll not mention his name, Krishna does. Uh, is a, and he sings, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, very nicely, you know, all right? And then devotees play his bhajan. But there is interview with him. What is your understanding of God? What is your understanding of God? Oh, I'm still looking for him. I haven't found yet. He doesn't know who is God. Then you have another tape, which devotees don't play, but he sings Nama Shivaya very nicely also. <laughs> then he sings Om Shakti, Om Shakti very nicely. So why to hear from him? Even holy name, hearing from him is not holy name. How is a holy name? He doesn't know who is Krishna. Why should Krishna manifest? It is a danger of hearing from people who do not know clear Sambandha Jnana. We don't take prasadam from them. We don't take uh, their association. We do not hear from them. We may go and preach to them, but we don't hear this. Because just because he has nice voice, doesn't mean that, that uh, you have so many sahajyas in Bengal who sing Hare Krishna Mahamantra, but they don't follow anything in life. We don't hear from them either. We don't hear their bhajans, we don't take their food, we don't hear their philosophy. But they may have similar tilak to ours, they may sing Hare Krishna Mahamantra very nicely, they may play Mardanga ten times better than us, but we don't hear. Why? Because after playing Mardanga, he puts a BD, break now. No smoke, little, you know, little, little baby, and then the smile to the householder's wife because they invited for kirtan. So give her a smile, you know. Mm. <laughs> no, it's like this. So now we go back to Prabhupada's purport. Yesterday we were hearing that how Lord responded to Brahma's desire to create and bless him that you will not fail in Maya. Okay. 
that Brahma asked, remember we were discussing yesterday that how Brahma was concerned that if I create, I'll be in Maya this day. Okay, so so that same shloka when, when oh, there is one more quote. Just a second. Before that, there is there is one more quote. I, did I miss this one? Okay, yes. Prabhupada speaks about this Maya. There's one more purpose. Excuse me for a second. Okay, here is one. <clears throat> The Mahadi philosophers miss even the first stage in self-realization because they have no conception of God's being personal. No? We are, oh, they're also spiritual, they're also nice, they're also sadhus. But look, first point they miss. They don't know that God is a person. He is the master of all and he's the only person who can accept the service of all living entities. But since this knowledge is lacking in Mayavad philosophy, Mayavadis do not have knowledge even of their relationship with God. They wrongly think that everyone is God or that everyone is equal to God. Therefore, since the real position of the living entity is not clear to them, how can they advance further? Although they are very much puffed up at being liberated, Mayavadi philosophers very shortly fall down again to material activities due to their negligence, neglecting the lotus feet of the Lord. It's called Patantyada. So, and then he goes, Yenyara Vindakshavi Buktaman in us, Avishuddha Buddhi. All right. So, this is, this is the problem with Mayava. This is for conclusion, just right. Innumerable quotes, 100 times Prabhupada's blast on this. Don't be sentimental. Don't hear from anybody uh, Gita classes, Bhagavatam classes, Ramayana, Mahabharat on YouTube. Now everyone is there. Be careful from whom you are hearing. One who is not coming, Guru Parampara should not be heard from. We should not hear from him. Unless one follows four regulatory principles and is coming in Guru Parampara, initiated by Bonafide Guru, whatever sweet he speaks is all poison. In sweet rice, if you put one drop of poison, what is it? It's a poison sweet rice. <laughs> you are not going to eat it. But it's still sweet rice. But they're also singing Hare Krishna. But it's a touch by the lips of the serpent. He chants Hare Krishna thinking, I'll become Krishna. This is a problem. Just ask, just ask. Ask first. First ask this question. What is your philosophy, Swamiji? Oh, philosophy, philosophy is very simple. I'm God, you are God, we are all Krishna. <laughs> Thank you very much, goodbye. I'm not going to hear from you. I heard enough. <laughs> Some Pandagyana, wrong. Did Arjun become Krishna? No. Did Hanuman become Ram? No. They were engaged in service of the Lord. And they are for that glorified. Okay. So back to our purport. That, that uh, uh, when Lord was pleased with Brahma and that was the cause of speaking Chatur Shloki to Brahma. Look at the Shloka. Simple Shloka. Atma Tattva Shudhyartam Yad Aha Bhagavan Ritam Brahmane Darshyam Rupan Avyalika Vratad Ritaha Now that is the moment. King, personality Godhead being very much pleased with Lord Brahma because of his non deceptive penance in bhakti, presented his eternal transcendent form before Brahma. And that is the objective goal of purifying the conditioned soul. So the goal of the bhakti is that we can engage eternally in service, that Lord will appear to us and that we can see him, we can be in his association, we can go home back to Godhead. But to serve him, that is the idea. Okay, so now look at the purpose. What Prabhupada discusses in this purport? See this, just pay attention. Look at the purport about this. Atma Tattva is science of both God and living entity. Both the Supreme Lord and the living entity are known as Atma. Okay, now this is in Sanskrit. When you read Vedas, Upanishads, Bhagavatam also, Gita also, the Atma refers to both soul and super soul, God and Jiva. So therefore it's misunderstood sometimes. Atma may refer to mind also. Atma may refer to body also. So according to context, we have to hear from Acharya, what is the meaning of it? So here it is. Both the Supreme Lord and the living entity are known as Atma. The Supreme Lord is called Paramatma, and living entity is called Atma, the Brahma or the Jiva. Both the Paramatma and Jiva, Atma being transcendental to material energy, are called Atma, because we are, they are above the material energy. Both are spirit soul, so they are called Atma. So, Shukade Goswami speaks this verse with the aim of purifying the truth of both Paramatma and Jivatma. 
purifying the truth about them. Clearing misconception that they are equal. Okay. Generally, people have many wrong conception about of them, of both of them. Look at now this analysis. Very interesting. The wrong conception of Jiva Atma is to identify with material body, with the pure soul. Okay, so Atma is misunderstood. Jiva, I'm this body. This is misunderstanding. And this is the fundamental principle of all our suffering. Because we are misidentifying with the body, we do not know the self, I'm Atma. Therefore, we engage in material activities, sense gratification. Once we understand that we are spirit soul, we are not this body, then we can engage in spiritual activities. Otherwise, it's not possible. So first misunderstanding is that body is equal to soul. And the wrong conception of Paramatma is to think him on an equal level with living entity. Now, they say Atma, Paramat, Atma will merge into Paramatma. Atma is Paramatma. Paramatma is in the heart. Oh, that means God is in the heart. Yes, God is in the heart, but you are not God. They think I'm God because God is in the heart. But we know from Vedas uh, that two birds sit on the tree. Two birds are described sitting in the tree. Body is the, compared to the tree or field of activity. And two birds are there, Atma and Paramatma. One is acting, eating the sweet or sour fruits of their karma. And another one is Sakshi, witness, looking and waiting. When will Jiva will turn to me for Bhakti? For it's re-establishing eternal relation. So here Prabhupada continues. Both misconception can be removed by one stroke of Bhakti Yoga. No, because in Bhakti, you get this jnana that I'm spirit soul, I'm servant of Krishna. This is established immediately. And therefore, engage in Krishna's service. So you are not misunderstanding that Jiva is equal to God, neither you are misunderstanding, misunderstanding that I am this body. So by one stroke of Bhakti, both are there. Just as in the sunlight, both the sun and the world and everything within the sunlight are properly seen. In the darkness, one cannot see the sun, nor himself, nor the world. But in the sunlight, one can see the sun, himself, and world around him. Srila Shukari Goswami therefore says that for purification of both wrong conceptions, the Lord presented his eternal form before Brahmaji. So Bhagavan was pleased with Brahma's bhakti, show his form and show, I'm spirit soul, I'm supreme Lord, we are not equal. And he, Brahma could realize, because his, well, his Swarupa is also revealed. He also understood, I'm not his body. And he understood, I'm not God also. This is very interesting to, in, uh, where was that, 11th canto, 12th canto, when, when the four Kumaras come and ask Brahma, that what is the self? What is really the definition of Atma? What is the proper understanding, you know? And uh, Brahma was uh, thinking for a moment, and then Swan appeared. And the four Kumaras look at the swan, which is the Vishnu avatar, and look at him. And they say, who are you? Huh? So swan reply, oh, you ask me, who am I? So if you think that I'm this body made of five elements, then you should ask, who are you five? Huh? So obviously you understood that I'm not this body. So you are asking, who are you? I'm not asking, who are you five? So I'm not this body. Second, if you think that I'm soul equal to you, then what would be the question, who are you? We are same, no? So obviously we are not same, correct? So why don't you bow down? I'm Supreme Lord. Nothing else is left. We are not equal. We are not this body. I'm Supreme Lord. Bow down. <laughs> Means this is summarized of the whole chapter, all right? Don't take it literally. Yes, make the point literally. No? So, so this is the point. This is here explained. That therefore, for purification board, wrong conception, Lord presented his form before Brahmaji. Hamsavata presented his form, and they could not understand it. So, so that's the point. The Lord reveals himself, being pleased with devotee, being fully satisfied by Brahma's non-deceptive of discharging bhakti yoga. Except for bhakti yoga, any method for realization of Atma Tattva or the science of Atma will prove deceptive in the long run. So for beginning, you may feel spiritual, you feel yoga, meditation, I'm meditating on Brahman, on the self. I'm, I'm everything. I'm one. We are all one. We are oneness. Mm. 
So, so get a little bit, some little bit of experience, little bit, little, 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 tiny, 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 tiny experience, a little peace, little feeling. Okay, I'm one with the universe. I'm one with, yeah, you are one in the sense you are one of the Lord's energies. Don't worry, we are also. No? <laughs> so, give you some little bit of relief. Because for a moment you're not engaged in gross material sense gratification, you know, in that way also, you know, helps. But ultimately, on long run, doesn't satisfy the soul because there is no service to Lord. There is no anandam. Sat you can realize. Chit you can get partially knowledge. But anandam will not come. Brahmananda is a small, small, small pleasure. Oh, I'm not this body. What a relief. I don't have to take birth again. Oh, what a relief. But what do I do as a spirit soul? What is my engagement? What is my activity? That, that is not explained. And therefore, there's no pleasure. And therefore, patantyado, they fell down. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord says that only by Bhakti Yoga can one know him perfectly, and then one can enter into science of God. Bhakti Yamaha Bhujana. Brahmaji undertook great penance in performing Bhakti Yoga, and thus he was able to see the transcendental form of the Lord. By Bhakti, he could see the Lord. His transcendental form is 100% spiritual, and one can see him only by spiritual visions after proper recharge of tapasya or penance in pure Bhakti Yoga. Now, this is interesting. Krishna says in Gita, prapadyante. How much you surrender, I reciprocate. If you think I'm impersonal, God say, I have no personal interest for you. This is shocking when I read this prapad. For love of his pure devotees, Lord reciprocates with pure love. Those who are interested in his impersonal aspect, he has no personal interest in them. This is worse than hell. Even if you go to hell because you did some nonsense, God is a little concerned for you. Oh, this foolish fellow, again he did papam, again he went to hell. Never he learned anything. I'll put him in animal form, let him suffer, let him learn, and one day he will come to Adato Brahma Jigyasa. But when you're impersonalist, you merge into Brahman, and you say, God has no form, God has no shape, God has no qualities, God's pastimes are not there. You're not interested in hearing. No inclination, shavanam, kirtanam, no inclination at all. Just grinding about Atma. Soham, Tatvamasi, Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Brahmasmi, no, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Aham, Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Brahmasmi. You go on grinding that. You have no interest to hear about God. You have no interest to glorify Him. No interest. To, even they come in front of the atheists, they say, this form actually ultimately is Brahman. You know? Even that, that doesn't help them. No? They have no interest to hear about God. What God says, I have no interest for them. This is worse. Baba, what is my position? Bhagavan has given up on me. In hell, at least he's thinking of me, how to help me. In, in person, Brahman, he thinks, I have no interest for this fellow. Who this is, what is my position? I'm lost, man, I'm gone, you know, I'm, I'm nowhere. Confirm, in unusual way. Construction department confirms the point. No? The, the, you understand what a scary thing is that in personal aspect, that God is not interested in it. Okay, I have to speed up a little bit. Uh, what do I say? Okay, I'll, I'll a little bit skip. Please, you read purpose <laughs> yourself. Okay, so we have to come, I have to read from the purpose, we have to cover this. Okay, so this portion we cover some bandagyana. Now, not exactly fully, one more small thing. The Bhaktan Saraswati Thakur writes here The knowledge that embraces only the first seven of the ten basic principles, Dasha Mula, is the knowledge of relationship. Now, Dasha Mula is Ayurvedic medicine for everything, from 10 different roots, whatever this is you have to take, cure. I'm not advertising medicine for COVID, please don't misunderstand. That medicine for COVID already we have, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Rama. But traditionally Dasha Mula, 10 roots are prepared together in such a way that it's very beneficial for body. So they cure all the diseases. It's called the all medicine, medicine for all diseases. So here, Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote a uh, book, Amnaya Sutra, which he explains this Dasha Mula, Dasha Mula Tattva. The 10 truths will be free you from all misconceptions of the, of the wrong understanding of Sambandha Abhideya and Prayojana. Or say like this, clear. Clear Sambandha Abhideya Parayojana. Can you stop him for five minutes? Just five minutes. Hmm? Maybe ten minutes. Tell them a little bit. 
to they can sit and hear a little bit. Sambanda Bidea Preoja. Okay, so here the Dasamula Tatwa. Um, I'll just show you the shloka. Okay, here the shloka is like this. Amnaya praha, tatvam harim, iha parama sarva, shaktim rasabdim, tat binam asamsha, chajivam prakriti, kavalitan, tat bimuktas chabhavat, beda beda prakasham, sakalam, api hare sadhanam, shuddha bhaktim sadhyam, tat preetim, evet yupadishati, janan gora chandra swayam saha. So this is the shloka where all ten basic philosophical points on our philosophy are listed in one. So here the purpose says, the knowledge that embraces only the first seven of the ten principles, Dashamula, is knowledge of relationship. This Bhakti Thakur writes song, write the purpose here, and he wrote the shloka. So he is saying, first seven, seven, yeah, out of ten relate to Sambandha. Okay, so let's see what are these. First is, the Vedas are the principal scriptural evidence, which in turn expound the following nine principles. So what is this? Sambandha Abhideya Prayojana. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll give you a little time to think. Krishna is supreme absolute truth. What is it? Sambandha, definition of Krishna. Krishna is omnipotent. Sambandha. He is the fountainhead of all relationship and love. Sambandha. Living it is like his separate parts and parcel. Who am I? Definition. First three, who is God? Then jiva, separate part and pass. The living entity, due to its constitution, situation as marginal energy, may come under the sway of material energy. Jiva's relation to matter. Sambandha jnana. Okay. Again, due to his marginal nature, living entity in the liberated condition is free from influence of matter. Sambandha. The living entity and everything in this material cosmos is simultaneously one and different from Supreme Lord. Relation between Jiva, universe, and God. Sambandha again. So how many we have? Seven. Seven. Yeah. From two comes seven Sambandha. Then comes pure devotion services, living entity, occupation, and means. Abhideya, how to engage in devotion. So it's process of devotion. And pure love of Krishna is living entity's ultimate goal. Prayojana. So one is Prayojana, one is Abhideya, seven are Sambandha because these are fundamental principles. And the proof of this is Vedas. So this is Pramana. Pramana is this on which truth is based. How do you know this is true? It is from Vedas, Guru Sadhu Shastra. So this first one is actually Pramana and all other nine are Pramaya, the object. But what is ascertained? What is described by the truth? What is established by Pramana is Pramaya. So, so this is, so, this, so these are the seven that we must know. Krishna is supreme, is omnipotent, font hand of all relationship, Rasavaisa, living entities part and parcel, living entities can be in Maya, living entities can get liberated. And living entities and material simultaneously one and different, being the energy of the Lord one, but different by the nature, you know. And this these two are are uh, further explained. Okay, so Okay, let me really, there's not much time to discuss everything. <laughs> okay, I'll read from the purpose. Let us go to the purpose. The substantial nature of the spiritual function, Abhideya, inculculated by the science of devotion. What is Abhideya? Now, Bhakti Tagore gives the definition. What is Abhideya activities? Hearing, chanting, meditation, tending his lotus feet. What is it? Worshipping by rituals, making prostration. Yeah, Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada, Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dhasyam, Sakyam, Atman, Nivedam. These are the processes of devotion and service. This is Abhideya. This nine, this is Abhideya. Okay. And surrendering oneself as identically practiced in the search for Krishna. Okay. It is specifically described in Bhakti Rasamri Sindhu. <clears throat> devotion, Bhakti, characterized by love of God, makes her appearance by being awakened by such knowledge and practice. Love of God awakened. Such devotion is super excellent bhakti and no other than the final object attainment of spiritual endeavor of the individual jiva. So here Prayojana is described. 
as a love of God had awakened by the practice of this nine, Shavana, Kirtan, Vishnu, Smarana, etc., one will achieve love of God, Prayojana. So I have innumerable quotes from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, of course, definitions of Abhideya, definitions of Prayojana, this, that. So I'll just give you a few hints and then later on you can read it yourself as already it's nine o'clock. <laughs> you know. But uh, we were discussing the most important points, so don't worry. Here, say Sarva Vedera Abhideya Nam, Sadhana Bhakti Haite Haya Premera Udgam. This is what Chaitanya Charitamrita says uh, about Abhideya. By practicing this regulated devotional service, sadhana bhakti, okay, under the direction of spiritual master, certainly one awakens his dormant love of Godhead. This practice is called abhideya. So sadhana bhakti, we have to be engaged first in sadhana bhakti, that will lead us to raganuga bhakti, that will lead us to spontaneously loving Krishna and develop bhava and prem. So Prabhupada explains like this. By practice of devotion service, beginning with hearing and chanting. Okay, now this is important. Just pay little attention. There are really subtle points inside. By practice of devotion service, beginning with hearing and chanting. So we come to the temple. We meet devotees. We hear from them first. Shavan is first. First hearing. Either we hear holy name or we hear Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana, Tattva, Jnana. No? Okay. The impure heart of conditioned soul is purified. We get purified. We take prasadam, we have darshan, we hear holy name, we dance in kirtan, we hear the lecture, we get purified. And, that, and soul is purified. Thus, he can understand his eternal relationship with Supreme Personality of Godhead. So by engaging in Abhideya, Sambandha is also revealed. You see the combination. So jnana and bhakti. This is what the shloka says today. No? By jnana and bhakti, love of God will be. So you see, it's combination. So when people come immediately, we don't ask them immediately, you know, uh, take diksha, this, that. No, you come. Means you get purified first. <laughs> That's what it is. And we engage them. Come and serve Krishna. Come and hear about Krishna. Take Krishna prasad. Don't worry, just come take prasad. Because we know it's purified. Just chant, sing and dance. Then slowly, slowly, slowly by getting purified and hearing, shravanam. Hearing is there. Understanding, proper sambandha. Oh, I'm spirit soul. I remember our she. Garudasana Prabhu, he said that he came for Janmashtami and Guru Maharaj was that year here, 2007, 8, 9, huh? 2011, 2011. Guru Maharaj gave class and he, he was coming a few times before the, that he came to temple, but he said, I remember for Janmashtami lecture, Maharaj was very clear, God is a person, is not in person. And Maharaj was banging all class on that, you know. And you may say, oh, what about Janmashtami, tell some Leela this, that. But some Bandha Jnana has to be established. You Leela, 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 but ultimately it's all in person, ultimately in Brahma Jyot. No, you have to explain. So Mari was so strong and you told me once that, oh, I remember from that class, that struck me, God is a person. It was very clear how he explained, God is a person, it's not impersonal. Yeah? And he, he look at him, devotee, became devotee. But why? Because proper Sambandha Jnana, it's clear, it's clear what is it. It's not all are we all equal, we are a little bit this temple, a little bit that temple, a little bit with this Swamiji, a little bit that Swamiji, a little bit going to Devatas, a little bit Kula Devatas, then go a little bit cinema, and then we are all spiritual, we are all one. You know? So that eternal relationship is described by Jivara Surupa Hoy, okay. When one is convinced about relationship, one then you hear, oh yes, I'm servant of Krishna, eternal spirit. So Sambanda, he acts accordingly. That's called Abhideya. The next step is Prayojana Siddhi. So this is how it goes. Again, one more explanation is given Chaitanya Charitamrita. Not one more. Many times it's mentioned to Sambandha Abhideya Prayojana in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Abhideya Nama Bhakti Prema Prayojam Purushata Shiromani Prema Mahadhan Devotional service or look at this definition. Sense activity for the satisfaction of the Lord. If you look at Prabhupada's definition of devotional service. Sense activities for satisfaction of the Lord means that we engage our senses, gross and subtle senses, in service of the Lord. All the senses, mind, intelligence, ego, words, body, everything in the service of the Lord. Devotion service or sense activity for satisfaction of the Lord is called Abhideya because it can develop one's original love of Godhead, which is the goal of life. So by engaging in devotion service, we develop Prema Prayoja, we develop love of God. 
This goal is the living entity's topmost interest and greatest wealth. Purushartha, Shiromani. What are the Purusharthas? Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Dharma, religiosity for material benefit. Artha, to get it, economic development. Uh, what is it, Dharma, Artha, Kama, sense gratification, and Moksha, liberation. But Prema, Pumartha, Mahan. The fifth one, Prema, that's the ultimate one. Purushartha, Shiromani. No, so it's clear. That's one attains the platform transcend law and service unto the Lord. Another place, it said, Sadhanara Fala Prema Mula Prayojan, Se Prema Paya Jiva Amara Sevan. By rendering devotion service, one gradually rises to platform love of Godhead, Prayojan. That is the chief goal of life. On the platform of love of Godhead, one is eternally engaged in the service of the Lord. So that's ultimately. Now, what is the thing with bhakti? Bhakti is the means and is a goal. That's, that's the thing, that by bhakti, you actually develop love of God, and then what do you do when you have love of God? You do bhakti. You go on to serving Krishna. And that is, that is the topmost. That's the yayatma suprasirati. That will only satisfy the soul. So Prabhupada says, the word payojana means necessitous. You cannot live without it. It's must, it's necessary. And the ultimate necessity is explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prema Pumartu Mahan. The greatest necessity of human being is achievement of love for the Supreme Personality Godhead. If we, if we have human form of life and whatever money we have and name and fame, prestige and position in society and wealth, if we don't develop love of God, it's Shama Eva Hikevalam. Useless waste of time. We wasted our life. The goal of life, the ultimate goal of life, the most beneficial goal of life for the human is to develop love of God. Okay. So, when living entity, Prabhupada said, actually develops love for Godhead, he has reached the ultimate goal, Prayojan. In other words, one who becomes fully Krishna conscious has attained the perfection of life. So, there are many, many quotes, but I'll just conclude with uh, what we started, you know, with that, uh, back to our Chatushloki Bhagavatam, because of Brahma's concern, Lord given mercy. Out of mercy, he's speaking this five shlokas. And out of mercy, in Bhagavatam, he spoke Chatur Shloki there. Okay, here, Pancha Shloki, there Chatur Shloki. But look what, what, what is said here. Uh, let me see which one is it. Okay, there are many quotes. I have to skip a few quotes. You must understand there is no time. But look at this quote. Bhagavatera Sambandha Abhideya Prayojan. Chatur shloki te prakatatara karya chalakshan. The essence of Srimad Bhagavatam, our relationship with Supreme Lord, our activities in their connection, and the goal of life is manifest in four verses of Srimad Bhagavatam and Chatur shloki. Everything explained in those two verses. What is Chatur shloki explaining? Sambandha abhideya preoj. <laughs> Back to the, let's close the circle now. Okay. Okay, okay. I know I spoke a little fast today. I know it's a little difficult subject, but nothing new. We heard this hundreds of times. We are reading it every day in Prabhupada's books. Just today, a little particularly explaining what is the Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana, simple like that. So thank you very much for hearing patiently. And Krishna willing, let's see, we may continue. Uh, we may continue this week, in the weekdays also. We have another uh, few shlokas to cover. So we may finish this week, this Brahma Samhita. So I think maybe tomorrow morning we'll have another class. And let's see, Krishna willing, if we can do Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, we can go through it because next weekend and then after that, we are very uh, much engaged in this uh, God Purnima celebrations activities. So therefore, that we will not wait for the weekend for next Brahma Samhita class. That's our plan. Let's see what's Krishna's plan. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna.